They were great. Thank you so much. Um, next is the superintendent's report. That's kind of a tough act to follow, isn't it? it indeed it is. And uh, we have great schools and uh, wonderful kids, and it's uh, just always uh, terrific to be a part of anything we do. And uh, I know each of uh, our board members were present uh, Friday evening, and later when we dedicated the new Irmo Centers uh, for the Arts uh, and saw just marvelous uh, student performances. It was a, a really a, a banner evening for uh, District 5. Uh, one person I want to recognize who's joined our staff since we last met is Mr. Don Earle. If uh, Don would stand, he is our joining us as our Director of Technology. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Mr. Earle to our uh, district. Uh, Tonight, uh, one of the things I wanted to kind of reflect on is uh, Vision 2015. And I think this is familiar enough territory. There's nothing new in it. You don't have to move, uh, but uh, it'll be on the screen. But I'm going to move around where I can see it a little better and uh, just make a few comments about it because this is our first meeting of 2015. And it was four years ago that uh, I joined the district. It may have been right here at River Springs. I can't remember. I think that's where my, uh, where the uh, first event was. So uh, we've made the full loop around probably twice, I guess. And early on, uh, we uh, presented Vision 2015 about where did we want to be in four years. And so you heard a lot about this for uh, the first couple of years I was here. We actually haven't reviewed it in several uh, uh, several months, more than a year, but just want to kind of look back in terms of where are we? It's 2015, and what have we accomplished? Uh, so we said, where do we want to be in four years? And we said that we wanted to be recognized as a world-class district, not only here in the Midlands and South Carolina, but to be recognized as a world-class school district all across the nation and around the world. And then we defined world-class as... Uh, being a, a system where teachers have the setting and resources they need to do their best work and students have the setting and instruction they need to perform at their optimum levels and to complete globally. Uh, we've had lots of um, successes and uh, again this is something that's always a work in progress but we did have visitors from China as you know um, and I guess it was November uh, when they were here so we know that people are taking note of what we're doing uh, literally uh, in our, within our state and literally all around the world. Uh, so how did we get there? Uh, how did we get there? We said that basically it was a four-step process with uh, the fourth step having uh, five major sub-steps, but was to uh, work on restoring trust and eliminating fear. And secondly was to confront our brutal realities that we faced in the district and at that time, we identified, uh, reflecting on the, uh, the, the term brutal realities, which came from the late Admiral James Stockdale, uh, as quoted in the book Good to Great, about uh, moving forward while facing what your realities are. And we identified uh, several in 2011. I won't go through all of them, but uh, the fact is we said that we were going to look at what our realities were and deal with them. And... Uh, the step three was we wanted to change the dialogue here in our community, have more dialogue related to improving teaching and learning, and less dialogue related to uh, mediating disagreements among adults. And the fourth step, which had five subparts, was we said we must move forward with our new facilities and facilities improvement program. That was four years ago. At the time I arrived, we were working on upgrades and renovations at Chapin Elementary, Leapart Elementary, Seven Oaks Elementary, and Irmo Elementary School. And uh, they were uh, uh, works in progress at that time, four years ago. And immediately after I got here, we got the approval to proceed with the Center for Advanced Technical Study uh, Studies, which has certainly become a reality. So beyond that, we said there were five things we wanted to do. One was to renovate and expand Chapin High on its present site. And it's certainly a work in progress, nearing completion, looking forward to having a big dedication ceremony there uh, in the very near future. 
Secondly, to build a new high school on the Spring Hill site and to open it as a magnet high school. And that has been done. As you know, that's opened in 2013. Number three was to make significant improvements to the physical facilities at Irmo High and Dutch Fork High. And as you know, at Irmo High, we had the dedication uh, Friday night, the ribbon cutting, and uh, we'll be having one in the near future at Dutch Fork High for all of their improvements. Uh, we uh, revised the step number four to build the new middle school, which is Chapin Middle School, located on um, uh, Broad River Road, Chapin, South Carolina. And it's certainly a work in progress and will open in August of uh, this year. And you all have, uh, have approved our uh, feeder system as shown uh, above. Again, giving us three clear, distinct feeders, Chapin, Dutch Fork, Irmo, with uh, the Center for Advanced Technical Studies serving students from all high schools. And Spring Hill High School is being uh, a standalone entity taking students from all across the district. And number five was to expand magnet and choice options throughout the district. For the purpose of making optimum use of our existing space, enhancing the ability of each school to compete effectively with other schools in our district and community, and to meet the unique educational needs of our students. In 2011, uh, we had Escolaris at Harbison West, uh, the International Baccalaureate at Irmo High, and the STEM Academy at Dutch Fork, and we had one magnet school at um, Leapheart. Now, you can see that the list has expanded in terms of magnet programs, the Center for Advanced Technical Studies has been added, and magnet schools have clearly increased, including Spring Hill High School, the International School for the Arts program at Irmo High, Irmo Middle, Leader in Me at H.E. Corley, and two more that uh, I didn't have, I didn't get to, get, didn't get to, there we go. The Media Magnet at Seven Oaks, Media Magnet at Seven Oaks, and our Environmental Sciences Magnet at Dutch Fork Elementary. We've had a couple of magnet fairs in the past re, uh, recent weeks and had a crowd of well over 300 uh, last Thursday evening as parents from all across the district came to find out about what their choice opportunities are here in the system. So I think as we look back, we can say that the goals of Vision 2015 have, for the most part, uh, been achieved. Of course, they are all always works in progress, but I think, I think uh, we've, done, we've done well. So I would say thanks to our visionary board uh, who makes all this possible, to our supportive community, our dedicated staff, and our impressive collection of students, such as those we just saw in the video here from River Springs, uh, for all that has been done uh, to make uh, uh, 2015, Vision 2015 a reality. And so now, it's on to Vision 2020. No more talk about Vision 2015. We'll be talking about what happens in the next uh, five years. And to drive this, we'll be looking at the information we uh, uh, garner from our current advanced ed process that we're working on right now. We'll have a presentation on that at our next board meeting. And advanced ed folks will be here in the district later this spring. And uh, we will use that to drive uh, our future vision along with all the input that we'll receive uh, as we've always done from the board and certainly from are, I think it's about 10 advisory groups uh, that we have here in the district, and we'll be working with them over the course of the next several months to formulate for your consideration what is, what is it that will go into our vision for the next uh, five years. So I thank you very much for your support, and I hope that you join me in feeling good about what we've been able to accomplish uh, in the past four years. Thanks. All right, we know that no matter how good we are, uh, we can always be better. And one of the things that we're working on is always being better. And uh, so this evening, uh, we, uh, something that we've looked at, which we think uh, has some real positive uh, potential for our district, is something that uh, uh, 
Mr. Richardson, our uh, Chief Finance Officer, will introduce at this point in time, Mr. Richardson. Apparently, I just don't know how to operate a microphone. Thank you very much, Dr. Hefner. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Julie Gertz. She's the Regional Sales Manager for Ke Kelly Educational Staffing, and she's going to give you a brief presentation on some services they can provide regarding our substitute teachers in the district. Uh, Julie um, actually, uh, I think, flew in ahead of a ice storm uh, a day early to get here, so uh, we're glad to have you, Julie. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. I appreciate it. Dr. Hefner, um, Madam Chair, and distinguished board members, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to have us here this evening. We really appreciate it. Um, I do have two local team members with me that I'd like to introduce. Nat Baker, who's our business development representative here in Columbia, and also Gina Berry, who's our district manager here in Columbia. So thank you for having us. And they blame me for the weather you're having. They say I brought it with me, so I apologize. <laughs> I just want to briefly um, go over the PowerPoint presentation that was in your packets um, and then would certainly welcome questions uh, that you might have for me. So just to hit some of the high points in the PowerPoint presentation that's in your packets, a little bit about Kelly Educational Staffing's experience. Um, we developed our substitute teacher staffing program in 1997. Um, piloted it for two years in Mississippi and then rolled it out nationally at the end of 99, beginning of 2000. Um, we are very pleased to say um, that we now serve over, we now serve 15 public school districts and nearly 300 schools in the state of South Carolina. And we um, place qualified substitute teachers in over 50,000 classrooms a year just here in the state. Um, nationally, we are the largest employer of substitute teachers in the country. So on any given day, we're sending 11 to 12,000 substitute teachers into America's classrooms. Um, the next page you will see, I did include the names of the school districts that we're currently working with here in the state of South Carolina. So please, I would encourage you to speak to your colleagues at these districts um, about their experience with our program and their satisfaction with that as well. I will tell you that Georgetown did just kick off January 5th. So their first day with us was just a week ago. So they're a little new. Um, the next page, what we call the wheel, this gives a really good overview of what our program looks like kind of from start to finish. Um, it encompasses everything with regards to your substitute teacher staffing, um, including the transition of your current substitute teachers. We want you to keep those preferred substitutes in your schools. Um, as well as recruiting additional substitute teachers um, that will be thoroughly screened um, and interviewed prior to ever coming into your district, as well as being trained. There is substitute teacher training that we require of all of our new substitute teachers. And then we also use an automated scheduling system, which is terrific for the district um, with regard to reporting and data analytics that you can use to look at your um, absences. We also offer a terrific benefits package to our substitute teachers. Um, some of the highlights are uh, weekly pay, direct deposit. We have a great bonus program. So the more they work throughout the school year, they can earn a bonus in the summertime when they're usually not working. Um, we also have a substitute teacher of the year recognition. We recognize one substitute teacher from each state. That state winner receives a $100 bonus and then is um, considered for the national award. The national award is given an additional $1,000 bonus and gets a lot of great recognition. So those are just some of the benefits that we do offer our substitute teachers. If you look at the next page, I highlight the obligations that we take over as the employer of record. So as the employer, we are responsible for all of these employees um, with regard to um, all the state and federal taxes that are currently assumed by the school district, unemployment, workers' compensation, the coming Affordable Care Act, which I think we're all still <laughs> trying to figure out a little bit. Um, we do not, um, with regard to the Affordable Care Act, we do not limit hours for our substitute teachers in any way, shape, or form. So if someone works the minimum amount of hours, which is the 30 hours a week on average, they will be offered benefits under the Affordable Care Act. And the main reason we do that 
is because we want consistency in your classrooms. Because those people who are probably working five days a week are probably some of your best substitute teachers. So we want to make sure that they stay in your classrooms. The other thing is, is if you have a longer term assignment, you want to make sure that you have that consistency there for those children as well, for that entire term of that assignment. Um, so we will never limit the hours of our substitute teachers. We do not have any 1099 contractors. They are all employees of Kelly Services. Um, they are W-2 employees through us. And then, as I mentioned, we do thoroughly screen them before they ever come into your classrooms, including a one-on-one -on -one interview with every one uh, candidate. We also run the sled checks that are currently required by the state. We verify their education, their references. We do an additional criminal background screen that is required by Kelly, as well as the National Sex Offender Registry check. So, in summary, the benefits that um, our school districts see are relieving you of some of the administrative burdens that come along with managing the substitute teacher process, as well as some of those employer obligations that I mentioned, unemployment, workers' comp, affordable care. It's a win for um, your, your substitute teachers as well because of the benefits that we do offer. We do not change pay rates, whatever your pay rates are currently. That is what we mirror, and those substitute teachers will get that same amount of pay through Kelly Educational Staffing as they did through the school district. So we want to help you um, achieve your goals, which looks like you guys are doing a great job, at least over the last, the last four years, and we'd love to be a part of that for the next five years in your Vision 2020. So thank you for your time today. The other things that are in your packet, there's a one-page kind of brightly colored document that we call our infograph. It kind of gives a snapshot of our overall statistics. And there's also a couple of um, customer profiles on some of our current customers. One is Berkeley County, and the other one is Rock Hill. And that gives you some information as to what they were facing prior to our program, what solution we put in place, and what the results were. And then there's a great FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions document, that hopefully answers some of the questions. But thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to take questions. Are there questions? Ms. Hammond. Um, I think so. Um, we currently, I teach in Lexington too, and uh -huh. we use it. Um, so I, I have some, some really good things to say about it, and then I had a couple of things that, that I'd like to ask you that, you know, how we might improve. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Hammond, I don't, it might not be on. I know, is it on? It's on top. I'm used to the one where we live. <laughs> Hear me? I can hear you, yes. <laughs> I have the teacher voice, I know. Um, <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I was going to say, um, as a teacher, I can tell you it is a real nightmare for administrative uh, people in, the, in an individual school to handle this. And it's also very important as a teacher, if you're an accountable teacher, and all of ours are, they care. Um, having a quality sub in there is so important because you feel like you can't miss a day. And sometimes you have to miss a day. Um, and our principal would have to scramble to find them or whoever it was. So this is better, I think. But one of, one of our real problems is early morning mm -hmm. um, because we have a number to call you. Mm -hmm. It works great. Mm -hmm. We have had some really substandard subs sometimes, but we've weeded them out. Okay. I mean, I'm just being honest. You, sure. I bet you would say that. You have some candidates that you put in there, and then you find out from us, please don't send those back. Okay. But we have some really good ones. So they've allowed us, your company allows us to have a, what we call, and I wrote it down for our teachers to know, um, a favorite list, and you can request when you call. Now, I really like that. And so I can get the same continuity when I'm out to know they know my kids, they know my subject. You just don't know how important it is because one of the worst things for teachers is you feel like you can never be out. And if you know somebody's in there that could really teach the math or really teach the social studies, so um, I, I think it, I mean, I'm just speaking to the board. I was hoping mm -hmm. you would uh, want to hear because they did list Lexington two in there. Um, the okay. only thing, though, is the early morning, we don't always, we can't get anybody because you aren't open then. And a lot of times you may wake up sick or you have a baby that's sick when you wake up. Or, so we're trying to work that out. And my, other, my only other concern was how to eliminate some of those substandard subs we just had to, get and then let you know, please don't ever 
Mm -hmm. take them off your list mm -hmm. because we did get a few of those but sure. that's normal I, I know can can you address the issue of the early morning yes ma'am mm -hmm. I'd be happy to um, we actually have as I said we use an automated scheduling system so absences can be logged into that system either via the internet or via a 1-800 number on the phone 24 hours a day seven days a week and substitute teachers can view assignments, substitute teacher candidates can view those assignments through that same system that they're qualified for. Now, the other thing that the system does is it does make automated outbound calls. So if there is an assignment that is not yet filled for that day, they won't make them at 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. it, the system starts calling, I think it's about 6 or 6.30. But the other thing we have behind the system, in addition to that, our local office, you're absolutely correct, is not open that early, but we do have a customer service team that backs our local office, and they are there from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. So they're the folks that are there at the 5 a.m., the 6 a.m., and within the system, actually, if it's an hour before school starts, someone cannot log it on the system. They have to call that customer service team because then that customer service team along with the local team, depending on what time it is, begins making live outbound phone calls. I will tell you that there are those mornings that you can't find someone. Um, and that has, does happen um, realistically. Um, but in order to combat that, what we do and what we're doing in Lexington too is continuing to build that substitute teacher pool um, so that we have the numbers that we need in order to satisfy those last minute assignments because they are gonna happen. People get sick, children get sick. You know, things like that happen, and that is a part of what we do. Um, so that customer service team should be that live voice, as, as I said, that's there before our office locally opens. And Ms. Watson, okay, yes. if I could pull on that, it's like so many t times teachers do know ahead. That's not the real problem, so that was good. I appreciate you asking right. how, what they do there. And the only other one, I, if I might add it, um, is the half day with some districts, it varies like it's, it's 8 o'clock because you always ask what's the time period and it might be 8 to 11.30. Some districts, it's 12. It starts at 12 and we've had subs not knowing, you know, we just need to be sure yep. they know Absolutely. what our half day starts. Absolutely, and that would be during our implementation process okay. that we would gather that information for each school and it can vary by each school and we certainly accommodate that. If I can also, if you don't mind, address the substandard performance um, issue. Um, unfortunately, I say this um, to my husband at times, why do I sell people? <laughs> um, you know, the screening process is meant to really thoroughly screen folks to make sure that they're gonna be a good fit for your schools and for your classrooms. Um, and that's why we do the one-on-one -on -one interviewing um, in addition to the required background screenings and things like that, and also require the training. At the end of the training, they have to complete a mastery exam and score at least 80% on that mastery exam to be considered for assignments. Are there going to be some folks that don't perform at the standard that we expect and that you expect? Absolutely. You just need to let us know that. As soon as you know that, <clears throat> we will remove them, we will replace them, um, we will not send them back to the school. And sometimes, as you probably experienced today, Dr. Bain can probably vouch for this, there are times when someone doesn't work well at one school, but works terrifically at another school. So we um, take that feedback from you, and those, um, we do, one, one of the things we want to try to do, if we can, is coach, counsel, and help our substitute teachers improve. So if there's feedback that you can provide to us that we can use to help them, that is our goal but we certainly would not have them return to a school they've been requested not to return to. Mr. Gant. Um, I wanted to follow up with something you said a minute ago and just ask you how this how it theoretically could work, but said, you said you adopt the pay scale that whatever district you're working in, yes. and I would assume, I, I know, and I don't know all the details, but we have a system where if you are a certified teacher and you're beyond a certain number of days and you, your certified pay comes in after two weeks or 15 days or whatever, how, so I'm seeing everybody nod their head, that'll still stay in place. Whatever we do would stay in place. My question would be this, we try to be competitive um, with our teacher salaries, with our administration, all of that, and, and we're, there's a constant uh, look at that. Mm -hmm. But do, 
obviously if you represent a lot of people in, in this geographic area, we have a lot of schools, and you said that uh, potential substitutes can look at the openings and apply for one. Is there an issue with differential in pay or we're all paying pretty closely that we wouldn't find ourselves short if we were if we were not very competitive with the current pay scale in most of the schools? I'm looking at my local team, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Do you know if they're competitively? And that's one of the things we also bring back to you, our partner districts. We sit down and do um, what we call partnership reviews at a minimum each year and with a lot of school districts each semester. And one of the things that we bring back to you are things like, well, you know, here's what we're seeing. You know, so-and-so has raised their pay rates or, you know, five districts surrounding you have raised their pay rates and here's where they are. And we just give you that information right. for you to have um, to make educated decisions. We are not going to insist or, you know, anything like that, but we will share that information with you and with the districts that we currently work with surrounding you, um, we can certainly look at that. That's good, and, and I, I'll be honest, I think we ask an awful lot of our substitute teachers, an awful lot, and we have some great substitute teachers that come, but we've heard, I've heard that many times. We, uh, if anything, I'm, I'm sure we, uh, we're probably underpaying like most districts. It's just a um, what happens, but it's, um, I'm, I think that feedback would be very valuable, but I did, uh, I would hope we're competitive. If not, we probably do need to talk about it because I can see where somebody would choose a certain district that was maybe ahead sure. of it. Sure. Thank Absolutely. you. Are there You're questions? I one. Okay. Right now, would, Dr. Hefner, what is our, pop, what do we use now? Does each school do something differently to call us? No, we're, we're with another uh, organization. With Dr. Bain can address that. Subfinder, okay. I'm, which is the right. automated piece of the of the entire process. So. Okay. I wanted to ask, um, with the two screening processes that you use, SLED and, and the National Registry, um, I guess our administration, do we do other screening processes for our employees that are beyond what um, Kelly is offering to do? No, we don't, we don't have the capability. I think they go one step further than what we can do. But we do the SLED and the sexual registry uh, check and, of course, the application and reference check. But um, we, we don't have that, I guess, that larger <coughs> scope reference check. Okay, that's a good Background benefit. Check. And the other thing, Madam Chairman, um, if you change your um, requirements in the future, should the district decide to make changes to those screening requirements, it just needs to be communicated with us, and then we would mirror those screening requirements. So at a minimum, we're gonna meet the state and school district guidelines, but the majority of the time, as Dr. Bain said, we go a step further. So are there other screening mechanisms that, that other school districts do, maybe not necessarily here in South Carolina, that to ensure the safety of our students? Yeah. Um, a couple of things that are different, I cover five states, um, and so not in the state of South Carolina, um, but in some of my other states, um, the background screening is actually done via fingerprinting, so that's a little bit different. Um, the other thing is I do have some, there's no state requirement um, in my states for drug screening, but I do have some school districts who require that. Um, some districts have, I think the only other one would really be TB testing would be the other thing. Okay, thank you. We do TB test. Oh, we do TB, okay, good. So we would mirror that then. Dr. Bain would not let me report to work in 2011 yeah. until I had my <laughs> TB test. She Even dots all her eyes and crosses many, all many her teeth. For many, years in my previous job, I had to have a new one when I came in. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't report to work until it was done. So we're really, we're really, really, really very good about it. <laughs> that's yes, why you say <laughs> that's why you say she dots the eyes and crosses the teeth. So I gotcha. <laughs> Whoever follows her, she's they've got to. Oh, you know, that's, that's to wonderful. <laughs> okay, thank you. I don't think there's any other. Um, and I fussed at her about it until you know there was a district in the state that had a problem where <laughs> there was a problem. Mm -hmm. with, I went there and I apologized to her and I thanked her for her uh, for her diligence and uh, and checking it out. Ms. Watson, yeah, th this may be something I missed in looking at this since I was just familiar with it. Is it just a fee by, from Kelly Services that's 
depends on the, it's just the system you buy, or uh, is it individual? Let, Mr. Richardson can answer that. The, the question is. In other words, the, the in other words, we how use do Kelly. we pay for yeah. it? How's it set up to pay? Is it a set fee to use them, or it's? It's just the percentage over and above what we're currently paying each substitute. Is, is that correct, Julie? Yes, it's it's you end up paying a daily bill rate to Kelly instead of a daily pay pay rate to the substitute, and you only pay for what you use. So if one day you use 10 substitutes, you pay for 10. If the next day you use zero, which probably doesn't happen, you would be billed for nothing. So it's, it's strictly pay for what you use. And we do the full day and the half day, just like you do currently. Way back when, and maybe in the 70s, was this once called the Kelly Girls? Yes, ma'am. I'm a <laughs> Kelly girl. I'm a Kelly girl, too. All right. <laughs> I love when people say that to me. I have a lot of people come up and say that. I know. We bond. That's right. That's right. Yes, ma'am. One and the same. But we have Kelly boys now, too, as you can see. They're co-ed now. Uh, thank you very much for your time this evening. We really appreciate it. And please don't hesitate to reach out to us should you have any other questions. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. And, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is our initial introduction of this. Of course, uh, we will bring back for uh, with more information and more discussion as we uh, as we uh, uh, seek permission to move forward uh, with this. Very good. Uh, at this time, we'll have our uh, uh, monthly update from our Office of Design and Construction uh, from uh, both uh, Mr. Keith McAllister, who works with us, and from Joe Huggins, who represents our uh, our. Uh, um, uh, uh, coming Southern Management, who oversees our projects. Mr. Huggins. Thank you, Dr. Hefner. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, and Dr. Hefner again, and staff. And it's a pleasure to be here to offer you the construction update uh, tonight. Um, we'll begin with Chapin High School. And uh, as you uh, mentioned, Dr. Hefner, we are rapidly uh, approaching the end of construction operations at Chapin High School. Um, we are looking forward to having our final, final, final inspection here soon, and I look forward to turning Chapin over to you fully in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, we are still working punch list items and some outstanding issues there, but nothing that would affect instruction or, um, or uh, the school occupying any, any areas. So um, you can see uh, uh, the new hallway to the cafeteria. Uh, we're getting that cleaned up and ready to go for turnover. Um, one of the items that we did in uh, the auxiliary gym area was update the fire sprinkler uh, for life safety and you can see that the heads have been installed, the ceiling has been replaced and we're ready to turn it back over to the school. And uh, obviously the new dance room and new classroom space um, in the last phases there at Chapin. So if there are no questions, we'll move on to, uh, to Irmo High School. And again, it was a pleasure being with you all Friday afternoon for the ribbon cutting and then the gala um, Friday night. And um, uh, we were proud of that and we're proud of that uh, new fine arts center as y'all are as well. Um, we are still finishing up some items in the rear of the auditorium, the amphitheater area and um, the loading dock um, paving. Um, we expect to finish that as, as quickly as possible um, as weather permits, but we're fighting through that. Um, and of course, as you know, we're working um, issues with our fire pump and a matter of fact, we're working on that as we speak. And on my way home, I'll be putting my eyes on it um, tonight. We'll probably be working until uh, late tonight and then all night um, tomorrow night to work the fire pump issue to get it ready for this week and to get it ready for turnover. But you can see uh, uh, operations going on and uh, grading the loading dock um, there in the back. And that should wrap us up with heavy construction there um, at Irma. Okay. Yes, Mr. Gann. Mr. Huggins, I, I know this really applies to all projects, but you mentioned punch list, and I'm sure you all are, you make a list, you probably have other people making a list, but how, who is the final person that says this, is, this meets the standard? Is that? Um, is it's that a collective effort. Collect, everybody uh, mostly, agrees to. Mostly you and your staff, okay. but um, um, coming, my company, we put together a list as well as the architect, and we also invite um, the district uh, folks, Coach McAllister's folks, to come down and, and, and provide a list as well. And once those items are checked off, and, and I've looked at it, 
and my architects looked at it. We let Coach look at it one last time to make sure it is it is up to snuff, and hopefully by the time it gets to him, we've taken care so of if that. It, so if it makes the list and then makes the muster, then it'll get checked off. Okay. Great. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the uh, to the new middle school, Chapin uh, Middle School. Um, we have a, a, a good flow going there uh, with um, our, our block mason, our roofer, and our steel erector. Um, and we are working uh, all three of those at the same time. And we've got a great flow going out there, as well as our uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing subs. They are falling in there right behind the structure goes up and ready to receive um, fixtures and fittings. We are going in there behind them and, and maintaining a good flow. Um, we got overhead aerials there of the new middle school, and those are a little bit uh, further along. Um, being honest with you, I tried to take a picture that didn't have water and mud in it, but um, <laughs> that's what we're dealing with right now. But rain is not an excuse. We're going to use that as an opportunity to shine out at the middle school. And um, that blue sky there, uh, I don't remember when I've seen that at the middle school, but we're going to hopefully get a picture with, with some more blue sky here soon. So. Um, there on the right, you, um, from, from where I'm standing, that's the upper slab we placed last week. Um, and we are, we've got one more major um, upper level slab to place, and then we should uh, be out of the slab business, which is good for the schedule and, and good for all the trades to have somewhere to go. So, And then the picture that I tried to indicate on the left, that, there, that is the roofers at the gym area, and roofing is ongoing, and we're drying in and, um, and making way. If there are any questions at the middle school or anywhere else, I'd be glad to answer them. Any questions? i just make one, one comment. When, when you started this project, the school didn't have a name, and we call it New Middle School. Maybe <laughs> can we now, now start calling it Chapin Middle School so people will uh, start identifying that we'll building as Chapin Middle School? We'll be at 8 o'clock in the morning, Dr. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Happy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Huggins. Appreciate it. Next is, are you finished? Oh, that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank okay. You. <laughs>